keep them for the first uh, time in their lives. They so, were free. Of they get the, the first village, black loyalist stepped foot uh, on Canadian down, soil here in Birchtown, Nova Scotia, back so in 1783. Put, uh, freedom was precious to them. They, they, for the most part, been enslaved for um, most, if not all, of their lives. So they were willing to do with less in order to experience, just to, to have the experience of freedom. But the road to freedom was long and harsh. That first winter was cruel. They didn't have much to work with or anywhere to go. So some black loyalists were forced to build makeshift shelters called pit houses. Um, the remnants have been found by archaeologists in the woods here in, in Birchtown. So we know uh, roughly what they would look like. They dug a hole in the ground and uh, made a shelter over top of it. Pretty bare bones for a shelter, though. Very bare bones, and it would have been very hard. They weren't used to uh, the elements, the cold, the wind, the snow, and um, weren't sure how to survive in that. And even though they were free, the black loyalists were still not treated as equals. I mean, they didn't have the food, supplies, tools. The rations that uh, should have been apportioned to them, uh, it was being withheld in many cases. Without adequate food, clothing, or shelter, Many people never did make it through their first winter of freedom. Many died of starvation and exposure uh, the first year. But some people somehow found the strength to survive in these pit houses. Deborah and Lawrence don't know how, but many families made it through that first winter. And their ancestors went on to build a future of freedom here in Canada. It makes me proud, actually, that they, they persevered through that, that they hung on. They were determined. You know, they, they, they did... They did make it through. For the Weather Network, I'm Shelley Steves in Birchtown, Nova Scotia.